Hi everyone, back here for another video. While everyone is talking about the upcoming iPadOS 26, as we have a few more months to wait for it, let me show you the current iPadOS and how I use it with my monitor. I believe there will be changes, but mostly it will work the same on the new version. This video may help you in case you are finding some information if your iPad is compatible with an external monitor or how to connect the iPad to the monitor. I will also show the accessories I use for this iPad desk setup. So grab a drink, grab a snack, as this is going to be a long video. I have here the M2 iPad Pro 11 inch, and I use this with the iPad Magic Keyboard, which I have been using since 2019 with my very first iPad Pro. It's still working with no issues, but of course, it is showing signs of wear and tear. Or if you've seen my other videos, I also use this magnetic stand from Kuxi. This helps put my iPad in a better viewing angle. Plus, this has the charging port here at the back, so I can charge my iPad while connected to the monitor. This is one of the accessories I use a lot, and in fact, this stays on my desk permanently. Alternatively, I can use this dynamic folio case that Moft sent over for me to review. I guess they call this dynamic because of the many positions I can do with it. Although this needs getting used to because the unique angles this has is not the same as other cases or the smart folio case. So the first angle, this can be an iPad stand that can lift my iPad for about three inches off the desk. To get this angle, I simply snap these two circles together. It is not as high as the Kuxiu stand obviously, but this higher angle helps. The second angle I can do is I simply push the iPad to the other side and I rotate it towards me. I can use this to write on my iPad while still being lifted by around 2 inches off the desk. It is quite stable but sometimes it wobbles especially when I rest my wrist on the iPad. I can also use this angle while using Stage Manager and in fact I find it easier to reach the iPad if I need to use the touchscreen. The third angle is for portrait mode, where I can lift out the magnetic snap at the back and attach the part of the cover. Then my iPad can be in this reading angle. It is a good angle if I need to read books or PDF files. I just hope though there's a lower angle which I can use to write in portrait mode. Fourth angle is something quite unique and might be counterintuitive if you're trying to be productive or it can help you be more productive. I don't know. Depends on each person, I guess. Snapping out the case cover, then connecting these two lines together will create a space for me to put my iPhone on. Although I'm not sure I will use this angle with my iPhone when my iPad is connected to the monitor. This position will be awesome if only the iPad and iPhone can work like my Samsung devices. I suggest you watch my video where I showed my Samsung tablet and my Samsung phone, which can work together with just one keyboard and mouse. Moft sent also the magnetic pencil holder. This secures my Apple Pencil and it stays in place as long as I put it in the right way. Whether my iPad is on the Cooksview magnetic stand or the Moff Dynamic Folio case slash stand, I need a keyboard and a mouse because there's no way to control the apps that are displayed on the monitor if I don't have these peripherals. Today I'm using the ever reliable Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse. I chose the Magic Keyboard mainly because of the presence of this globe key. As for choosing the Magic Mouse, if you want to know why I use this mouse, check out my detailed explanation in my other video. So now I have my iPad in place with my keyboard and mouse, I will now connect this to the monitor. I'm using this Dell monitor. This monitor connects via HDMI, so I have to use one of these two USB hubs which obviously includes an HDMI port, and it also includes a charging port, SD card ports, and others. You can watch my previous videos where I show this to adapters. 
Both these adapters support up to 4K and up to 60 Hertz display. So if you have a 4K monitor and cable that supports 4K, you should get an output to your external monitor in 4K as well. This Dell monitor has a resolution of 2560 by 1440 with a 60 Hertz refresh rate. So obviously, even if my M2 iPad Pro has a 120 Hz refresh rate, the output follows the specs of my monitor. Once I connect the USB-C adapter to my iPad, Stage Manager now automatically turns on. But if you get a mirror display or your mouse is not moving to the correct side where your iPad is positioned, then go to the Display and Brightness settings. Then go to Arrangement and put your iPad either on the left or right or on the top or at the bottom of the monitor. Also in this setting is where the mirror display switch is. I have this turned off, that is why Stage Manager turns on and I have the extended display. But if you don't see this setting in your iPad, it is possible you're not using the iPad model that supports external display. I will mention here again the compatible models even if I've mentioned this many times in my other videos. External display is supported on iPad Pro and iPad Air with M1, M2, and M3 chip, and of course with the M4 iPad Pro. Other models will only have the mirror display on the monitor. So how do I use my iPad Pro with my monitor and Stage Manager? Well, on the iPad itself, I turn off Stage Manager. I prefer to use the old multitasking like split screen and slide over because there are keyboard shortcuts for it. And to do the keyboard shortcuts, I need the globe key. And that is why I chose to use the magic keyboard. On the monitor, I use stage manager because there's no choice. There are not much keyboard shortcuts to go around the apps on the monitor. And I wish Apple will do something about this in the future. There are a few keyboard shortcuts that I find useful. Well, first, F4 on the Magic Keyboard or Command plus Spacebar is what I use to search for the app I want to add together with the app that I currently have opened. Then I will press on the Shift key and click on the icon and it will open the app beside the other app. If I just want to use the mouse, quite a few steps to do, but possible. I will make my app smaller by dragging the bottom of the window to show the dock. Or I can press globe plus A to show the dock. I can then hold on to the shift key and then click on the app icon and it will open beside the other app. Next useful keyboard shortcut, press control, the globe key and backslash and this will move the app from the monitor to the iPad and vice versa. Or I can use the mouse, but this requires Stage Manager to be switched on in the iPad display itself. Then I can drag the top of the app from the monitor to the iPad and vice versa. Next shortcut is the globe and the arrow up key, and this will show the app switcher. In one stage, I can have a maximum of four apps. So this means it won't let me open a fifth app. If I try to do that, it will kick one app out of the stage, which usually will be the first open app. For apps that support multi windows, for example, Safari, I can open four Safari windows at the same time. But in one window, I can have as many tabs as I want. I tested this before and I opened like 132 tabs and I can still keep going. I can drag the sides of the apps to manually resize it. And so far, there are no keyboard shortcuts to resize windows. And again, I hope Apple will make this available in future iPadOS updates. Same keyboard shortcuts that we have on Mac or in Windows or even on Android tablets. If I want to show the recent apps, I simply drag my mouse on the left side of the monitor, or I can keep the recent apps showing on the screen. To do this, I have to go to the iPad settings, then multitasking and gestures, go to the external display, and turn on or turn off recent apps. 
just note that even if I have the recent apps switched on, if I have an app displayed in full screen or almost in full screen, the recent apps will be automatically hidden. Once I make the app smaller, that is when the recent apps will persistently show on the left side, whether on the iPad display or on the monitor. Let me end by answering some questions I got from my previous videos, like how is screen sharing during meetings with iPad when using Stage Manager? So in FaceTime and in Zoom, only the iPad screen can be shared and there's no option to choose the external monitor. So I guess it will be the same in Microsoft Teams meeting. Another question is if I can write on the iPad while connected to the monitor. And yes, that is possible. I can use my iPad in writing mode and do something else on the monitor, like watching a video. Not a question, but I just want to mention that I like editing on this big screen. LumaFusion can go on full screen mode, or I can use the LumaFusion external preview option and keep the video on the external monitor while keeping the timeline on the iPad. A lot of information and I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, comment below and I will do my best to find the answer. If you have any tips to share about how you use your iPad with an external monitor, share them in the comments section. And that's it. Thanks for watching.